Shalom. Welcome back. First and foremost, I'm going to give all glory, praises, and honors to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. I'm going to give double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone and salutations to your acronyms pushing this word to sincerity and in truth. Back with another article. This is from AP. It says U.S. food banks struggle to feed hungry amid surging prices. Right. And I just read something else earlier about uh, inflation is running away as we all, you know, as we've been saying for the longest. Uh, this economy is, is in the midst of coming down. Things are going to get rough. Crime, poverty is going to shoot through the uh, roof. It already is. And uh, if you don't have your how about you, man, I was shy, that's your ass. <laughs> well, let's get into this article, grab a couple of scriptures, and that'll be it. This is Oakland, California. U.S. food banks already dealing from increased demand from families sidelined by the pandemic now face a new challenge. Surging food prices and supply chain issues walloping the nation. The higher costs and limited availability means some families may get smaller servings or substitution for stables such as peanut butter, which costs nearly double what it did a year ago. As holiday approach, some food banks worry that they won't have enough stuffing cranberry sauce for Thanksgiving and Christmas. And that should be the least of your worries, man. Because those food banks ultimately are going to be overrun. You're going to have people robbing food banks, man. All right. You just ain't we, we just haven't got to that desperation yet. And, and, and that's what's coming, man. All right. That's exactly uh, uh, what's coming to this place. What happens when food prices go up uh, is food insecurity. For those who are experiencing, it just gets worse, said Katie Fitzgerald, chief operator of Feeding America, a nonprofit organization that coordinates the efforts of more than 200 food banks across the country. Food banks that expanded to meet unprecedented demand brought on by the uh, pandemic won't be able to absorb forever food costs that are two, three times what they used to be, she said. Right. So she can't even afford to get the food to even feed these people, man. And then the people that's out in the public that lost job or, or can't work or are shut out, shut out of jobs because they won't get the, uh, the zombie juice. So you're going to have that that type of people. It's going to get ugly out here, man. All right. Because you, you know, you used to spend a hundred dollars at the grocery store. You get so much now. What you getting a quarter of it or half of it? So, like I said, inflation is kicking these people, kicking everybody ass. All right. Uh, that was a short article. But anyway, let's go right into the scriptures. Uh, first scripture I'm going to get is in the book of uh, Lamentation 4 and 9. They that be slain with the sword are better than they that be slain with hunger. For these pine away, shricken through for want of the fruits of the field. And you're going to have people dying of starvation, which is a horrible death, man. All right. A horrible death. People used to, uh, in America are so decadent and used to seeing and getting and receiving everything in this part of the world. You know, they will watch them Hamites over there in Africa. Uh, you know, they show the commercials, them, you know, bones and uh, skeletons showing through their skin because they, they ain't eating, eating. And ain't getting the right nutrients. That's going to happen to people over here, man. <laughs> you better believe it. It's going to happen to people over here because judgment is rolling forth uh, from the Heavenly Father, man. And it's beautiful that it is rolling forth. You see? This place, uh, these people, uh, this place and these people are going to be put in some very uncomfortable uh, uh, positions so you can understand. Uh, let's keep going. Let's go to the book. And this is not going to be long. Let's go to the book of Second Ezra 9 and 1. It says, He answered me then and said, Measure thou the time diligently in the self, and when thou seest part of the signs past, which I have told thee before, then shalt thou understand that it is the very same time when the highest will begin to visit the world which he uh, made. Therefore, when there shall be seen earthquakes and uproars of the people in the world. Right? So we see the uproars. You see people uh, going against these mandates. You see earthquakes in strange places. You see plagues. You see famine They're on the cusp of famine. Right. All these things are, are happening in the world. You know. All these things are happening in the world. And people got onions. You know, they can't keep up. Their food going to be gone, man. Like I said, you're going to have people robbing these places. A lot of these people going in here uh, look like a lot of northern kingdom out there in California. You know. Let's see if this thing in play. Mm. 
No, I guess it's just the footage. But yeah, let's go back to the scriptures. Yeah, that's that's mild right now, man. You ain't seen seen it. Because, you know, it's food banks out here that's next to uh wealthy neighborhoods that I didn't seen the line wrapped around the corner of people, you know, in luxury vehicles waiting in the fucking food bank, man. Seeing out in Orland Park. Orland Park out here in Illinois. And Aurora. I've seen it before. It says, uh, then shall that well understand that the most high speak of those things uh, from the days that were before thee, even from the beginning. For like as all that is made in the world have a beginning and an end, the end is manifest. Right? Even so, the times also of the highest have plain beginnings and wonder and powerful works and endings and effects and signs. And one of those signs is famine, hunger. That's going to be a major sign in the end times. Right? So let's uh let's keep moving. Let's stay in Second Ezra and go to Second Ezra the fifteenth chapter. It says, Behold, saith the Lord, I will bring plagues upon this world, the sword, famine, death, and destruction. So all this is happening, man. All these things are happening. You're getting a famine, right? You're getting the plague, so called plagues right now. You're gonna up see the uptick in uh, violence. That's coming. And you're going to end with what? Death and destruction. <laughs> hey, so you got a smorgasbord, of, as they say, of, of prophecy sitting right in front of you. That's what's coming, man. This ain't going to be no happy holidays and happy this and happy that. Nothing is, nothing is in the uh, stores or run out of products. People can't afford the products. You know? Sleepy Joe just pushed another man mandate that... Uh, He's working on that if, if a corporation has under a hundred, they got a mandate that they get the zombie juice. So he's coming for everybody. And that's and then you got automation. <laughs> hey, right in the back pocket. I just did a video on that. Walmart got a truck already running the route. Running the route back and forth from the uh, distribution centers to the uh, stores. So E is ready, man. E is ready for the collapse of this, meaning the elite and all the uh, simpletons out there that believe and got hope. Uh, in the American dream, they, they in for a rude awakening. Let's keep going. It says the wickedness have exceedingly polluted the whole earth and their hurtful works and fulfilled are fulfilled. Therefore, saith the Lord power. I will hold my tongue no more as touching their wickedness, which they profanely commit. Uh, he has destroyed this. He is out of order. Right. I'm not going to say destroy the society, but what it was, it's not what it was. All right. And you put the woman over the man. He didn't put the alphabet gang on every television show, every commercial, right? You got propaganda <laughs> rolling 24 hours a day as soon as you turn on the uh, news, all right? People are at the uh, wits, wits end, man, okay? Prices uh, and shortages are everywhere. Prices are rising. Shortages are everywhere. So this place is, is circling that drain. It says... Which they profanely commit, neither will I suffer them in those things in which they wickedly exercise themselves. Behold, the innocent and righteous blood crieth unto me, and the souls of the just complain continually. Right. So who's con who's complaining? The prophets, man. Who's crying out for righteousness? The prophets. All right. And the ones, uh, uh, you know, the remnant and the ones are seeking to be one third or the elect. To see a problem with this place. We're acknowledging the problem. And the problem is Esau, Edom, got to be taken out of the way. Verse 9, And therefore, see of the Lord power, I will surely avenge them and receive unto me all the innocent blood from among them. Behold, my people is led as a flock to the slaughter. I will not suffer them now to dwell in the land of Egypt. So which Egypt is this talking about? This is not talking about ancient Egypt, because when you read the second verse, the next verse, it tells you, he will smite Egypt with plagues as before. So he's talking about right now, uh, Mystery Babylon, aka America, right? Which is is going to be destroyed, man, and it's in the midst of being destroyed, right? It's fallen in increments. It's fallen gradually. He is becoming. He's pushing more and more of uh his his beast system, right? He's coming more and more with his draconian orders, and you haven't seen anything uh yet. 
Because the way he does it is he does a lot at once, then he pulls back a little bit. He does more, then he pulls back, and then he finally goes for that death blow. All right? <laughs> and he's coming with that death blow, man. But that's the point. I want to give all glory, praise, and honor to Yahweh Shai. And I want to say shalom on the next time.